Good morning, everybody. How you doing? It's lovely to see you all. Welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. It's the first Sunday of Advent, a very special time here at Asbury. Um, you're going to hear in the announcements everything we have going on. It's a full calendar of things. Get out your calendar. Uh, please stand and worship with us this morning.
Amen. Please be seated. Good morning and welcome to Asbury United Methodist Church. What a joy it is to see all of you today on this first Sunday of Advent. We're so thankful that you are with us. It is a morning of hope, and so we pray that this is a blessing to you. I'm Nick Shimmer. I'm one of the pastors here. My colleague is Reverend Hammett Evans. He's right back there with the guitar, and he'll be bringing today's message as we start our Advent series, Home for the Holidays. Uh, when you get a chance, please take a moment and log your your attendance if you could. Uh, Kevin passed out some uh, tabs to you that you can drop off in the offering plate. You can also scan the QR code right there. If you're watching online, that's the only way you can do it. So scan that QR code. Uh, take a moment, fill that out, and please include any prayer requests uh, that you would like us to know about. I have just a few announcements of some things going on during the Advent season here at Asbury that I'd like for you to know about. Uh, starting today, or tonight anyway, at 5 p.m., we will have our Advent dinner, uh, and along with that, following at 6 p.m., we'll have our Hanging of the Green service. So uh, we hope to see all of you back here at Asbury tonight for a wonderful time of fellowship and of worship. It is a great way to kick off the Advent season. Uh, we still have, and, and I wasn't here last weekend, but from what I hear, we had an amazing uh, weekend of, of Covenant Sunday. Uh, everybody was faithful in, in turning in pledge cards. If you have not had a chance to do that, however, uh, we do have some available in the back. Just see one of our ushers, and they can get those for you. On December 11th, we have our special music service over in the sanctuary. Uh, that is always a wonderful service that Diana puts together. Uh, we'll have a special music service in here on the following Sunday, on December 18th. And so we do have some special music services there. Uh, and then also on December 11th, as you can see on the screen, uh, is our uh, Asbury Kids uh, Christmas program. It is called a Super Christmas. I know our kids and, and Nicole and all of the leaders have been working hard to put together a wonderful show. And so we hope that you come out uh, that afternoon for a, a special time of fellowship on a very uh, family-friendly event. Uh, we have Hendrix College coming, uh, Hendrix College Choir uh, coming on December 16th uh, for their candlelight carol service, and that will occur uh, at 7.30 p.m. on uh, the 16th, and so uh, make time to be here for that. It's, it's wonderful, and I think we're, we're one of uh, two stops, right, one of two stops uh, this year, and so uh, it'll be a great chance to come and see them and support them. Uh, my last two announcements are related to boxes. Uh, first First of all, our family to family boxes, uh, we still have some available. Uh, today is the last day for those to turn those in. And so uh, if you have an opportunity to pick a box up and, and you know fill it up this afternoon and bring it back for the Advent dinner, please feel free to do so. And, and we'd be very thankful and appreciative. Uh, also, as you're moving around the church, you'll see some uh, boxes that look like gift wrap presents. Uh, and Mr. Greg put those out today. Uh, as most of you know our stone soup mission is coming up the fourth Sunday of this month, which is also on Christmas Day. And so we have this amazing opportunity to go and serve our friends in need on Christmas Day. Uh, we always collect a lot of winter apparel items leading up to that day so we can give them out. So we're looking for jackets, coats, warm hats, thick socks, those kind of things. And so as you pick those up, feel free to drop them in those boxes. There's one outside the sanctuary, and then there's two downstairs by the office. And so uh, let's fill those boxes up, take them with us on Christmas Day, and provide an additional blessing to our friends who need it the most. And with that, uh, with the Advent season, which is actually the first Sunday of the Christian calendar, Happy New Year to all of you, by the way, uh, we have brought back an old tradition that we call passing of the peace. And so if you would, please stand up if you're comfortable with it. Take a moment and greet your neighbor and tell them hello.
so as you find your way back to your seats, I would like to invite uh, Mark and Lisa Davis up here. They are going to lead us this morning in the lighting of the Advent candle of hope. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. We are glad whether we drove in or climbed up, whether we logged on or tuned in. We are glad to be here in this community with this family. It is a place of joyful hope, of radical welcome. It is a place where together we can wait in wondrous anticipation of the kingdom to come. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that God may teach us God's ways and that we may walk in God's paths. We light this candle as a sign of our hope, our joyous hope, that can be restored, our faith restored, our strength restored, our confidence restored, our joy restored as we watch and wait with all God's people for the promise to be fulfilled. Thank you both so much. That candle's had a year off, and so it's taking a minute to wake up. Please join me as we go to God in prayer. Gracious, loving God, we thank you so much for this day, that we can come together as your beloved children to give thanks and praise for the abundant blessings that you pour into our lives, the blessings that we see and the blessings we don't. God, this morning we come into this Advent season with hope in our hearts, hope that you will open our eyes to all the ways in which you love us in all the ways in which you have prepared the way for us, in all of the ways in which you heal us and comfort us and bring us peace. Uh, today is a day of hope, and our hope lies in you. Uh, this morning, we pray for all of those who are hurting. We pray for all of those who are lost, all of those, God, who have turned from you. We pray for all of those who are in need of your love and grace and healing. We pray specifically for Clifford Smith and for June Glacier. Pray for Barbara Clark and Val Carr. We pray for Megan Arnold, Joyce Dennis, Jean Hammett, Mark Shimmer, David Hickman, Mary Curtis, Scott Odena, Edith Roberts, Luke Sears, Hugh Roberts, Gail Pulley, and all of those God whose names sit at the tops of our hearts, the front of our minds, and the tips of our tongues. We know and trust that you are at work in all of their lives in a mighty way, so we can do nothing but give you thanks. And we thank you, God, above all else, for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the hope fulfilled. We thank you for everything he has done, is doing, and will do for us. We thank you for knowing how to pray. Jesus taught us that with the Lord's Prayer, which we'll now say together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we pray our hearts and minds for this time of offering, and we are thinking about hope, I can't help but be hopeful for all that God is calling us to here at the, As the Asbury community. I pray today that God is among us in a powerful way, that he moves us to see that our time, our talents, and our gifts become the means of grace in which we can bear Christ's image into the world. So as we prepare our hearts and minds for the offering, I ask that you please join me in a word of prayer. Gracious, loving God, what a blessed opportunity it is to come and, and give all that we are and all that we have for your glory. Uh, we know that we are small, but we know that through your power and your spirit, we can do amazing things. We just have to lean into our faith and trust you. So God, during this time of giving, let our hearts be moved to see and be part of the kingdom building you call us to. We ask all this in your son's holy name.
have a seat at this time. I'm going to invite Mr. Cole forward uh, for a children's moment with the children, or if you're a child at heart. Come on down. your Thanksgiving? Did you eat anything that you want to tell me about? Something good? Ham, super good. Mashed potatoes, turkey, mac and cheese. Oh, there, y'all are over it. You didn't have mac and cheese. That's okay. That's okay. Okay, so Thanksgiving is over, right? Got to go back to school. Are y'all ready for that? No. We better get ready because it's coming tomorrow, right? We better get ready. Yeah? Okay, so what is our next big holiday that's coming up? Christmas. Christmas. I knew you'd know the answer to that. What's your favorite thing about getting ready for Christmas? Cookies. Christmas tree. Christmas tree. I love Christmas lights. What about singing Christmas songs? Yeah? Yeah. Are y'all excited? Yes? Well, today is a very exciting day also because today is the first Sunday of Advent. Do you know what Advent is? What is it? Mm -hmm. That's 
That's right. We have these candles up here, and they all mean something, right? And so every week leading up to Christmas, we're going to light one of these candles. So we lit one today. Yeah, it, it's trying. It's trying to light. <laughs> Do you know what that first candle represents? Do you think you know? Hope. That's right. It represents hope. That's your middle name? Oh, that's perfect. Well, what does hope mean? What does it mean to have hope? You, yeah, what is, do you know what that means? Can you kind of tell me what that means when you have hope? It means you, you believe something will happen or you really want something to happen, right? Have you ever said, man, I really hope we have pizza for dinner? Yeah. Or I really hope I get that new toy for Christmas. Can you think, can you tell me something that you hope for? you have anything? No? What was it? Packers to beat the Eagles. <laughs> Packers to beat the Eagles. You're hoping for that, okay. Someone in the first service said they hope that they don't get sick. You know a lot of people that are sick right now with the flu and colds and all that, yeah. Yeah. You hope you don't get sick. Yeah, we don't. Oh, no. So you can miss school? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, today... What does our candle represent? Hope. Because we have hope in Jesus. He gives us hope, right? And we have hope knowing that in just a few weeks, we're going to get to celebrate Christmas, which is what? Jesus' birthday. All right. Y'all want to pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for hope. Help us to wait for Jesus during this Advent time. We love you very much. Amen. Our hope was placed in the wrong candle. We have two scripture readings this morning. One is from Isaiah chapter 64. The second will be from the gospel according to Mark chapter 13. Starting with Isaiah, if you only would tear open the heavens and come down, mountains would quake before you like fire igniting brushwood or making water boil. If you would make your name known to your enemies, the nations would tremble in your presence. When you accomplish wonders beyond all our expectations, when you came down, mountains quaked before you. From ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God, but you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You look after those who gladly do right. They will praise you for your ways. But you were angry when we sinned. You hid yourself when we did wrong. We have all become like the unclean. All our righteous deeds are like a menstrual rag. All of us wither like a leaf. Our sins like the wind carry us away. No one calls on your name. No one bothers to hold on to you. For you have hidden yourself from us and handed us over to our sin. But now, Lord, you are our father. We are the clay and you are our potter. All of us are the work of your hand. Don't rage so fiercely, Lord. Don't hold our sins against us forever, but gaze now on your people, all of us. Now, reading from Mark 13. In those days after the suffering of that time, the sun will become dark and the moon won't give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the planets and other heavenly bodies will be shaken. Then they will see the human one coming in the clouds with great power and splendor. Then he will send the angels and gather together his chosen people from the four corners of the earth, from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Learn this parable from the fig tree. After its branch becomes tender and it sprouts new leaves, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see these things happening, you know that he's near at the door. I assure you that this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will certainly not pass away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Welcome to Asbury. It's nice to see you all today. I hope you all all had a uh, very happy Thanksgiving. Uh, Michelle and I had a a good time uh, at my my brother and sister-in-law's house and uh, in, down in Lake Village, that was a fun trip. But I uh, hope, uh, hope you got enough to eat and, uh, and had a good time with your families as, as well. 
Um, I, I'm also glad that you're here today as we begin our, our Advent series. We have a lot of cool things coming up. It's a great time of year to invite friends and family who don't have a church home to come to church with you, and I want to encourage you to do that. I also want to lift up, we have a new addition to the Asbury family, and uh, there is a rose on the altar this morning in, uh, in honor and recognition and celebration of the birth of Charlotte Ann James who was born this week. Her mom is Audrey James. And uh, anyway, we're just thrilled to, uh, to add her to our family as, as well. Uh, so our theme during the Advent season is home for the holidays. And over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about uh, how we make a home for Christ in our hearts. And today we're going to begin with hope. Uh, we have some great worship services coming up. And again, just uh, encourage you to invite somebody to come with you. Would you pray with me? God, we do thank you for all of your blessings, and we pray now that you will fill our hearts with your presence so that all that we pray about and all that we say and all that uh, we consider and ponder in our hearts will be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, you who are our strength and our friend, our rock and our redeemer. And the people of God said, amen. So how do you get ready for Christmas? Uh, I, I remember when I was little, I, I would start preparing for Christmas right around, right after Halloween when the J.C. Penney catalog would arrive in the mail. And uh, that is actually the 1981 uh, J.C. Penney Christmas catalog. Uh, that's a page from there. And yes, my brother got that snow speeder and I was so jealous. Anyway, we don't have to bring up, you know, horrible memories from your childhood today. But um, I always had my, my list ready for Santa by Thanksgiving. And uh, we would trim the tree and deck the halls the weekend after Thanksgiving in, in, in my house. And one of the things that mom would always <laughs> dig out was an old uh, Advent calendar. And you may have had one like this. We bought ours at the UMW Bazaar. It had a red felt background and a green tree, green felt tree. Some of y'all, how many of y'all had that in your home? Uh, yeah, I see a few of you. Y'all are, are old. So uh, anyway. <laughs> like me. So um, we, there were 25 ornaments in it, and so every day mom would have us place an ornament in there. Of course, the last ornament went on day 25, and that was the baby Jesus. And we never thought the baby Jesus would ever get here. We, it, it just lasted and lasted and lasted forever. I, I want you to think about that for a moment and ponder this question. Do you ever think, do you ever feel like goodness will never arrive? You ever think that good will never arrive in our world? You know, I see some of the stuff going on on the news, and I wonder, why doesn't God just come down here and do something about this? I mean, a couple of shootings over the last few days, lots of chaos and, and, and stuff in the news. Why doesn't God do something about that right now? Well, the, the person that wrote this part of the book of Isaiah felt very much the same way. His people had cut God out of their lives, and they had done that by worshiping other gods, the gods of success and excess. And while they were doing that, they stomped on the backs of the poor in order to get more stuff for themselves. And God was very patient, but after many years passed, God finally got fed up and allowed Isaiah's people to suffer the consequences of their sin. The Babylonians came and destroyed God's temple and carried a whole bunch of people off into exile. Well, empires rise and empires fall, and sure enough, about 50 years later, the Persians came along and conquered Babylon. The Persian king was a man named Cyrus, and Cyrus decreed that the people of, of Israel, the Jews, might return home. And that sounds like really great news, and they were very excited at first, but when they got back, they found that God's temple was nothing but a pile of ash, and there were no city walls around the capital city of Jerusalem to give them protection, and there were no homes left for them to live in. They had to rebuild and restart from scratch. Other nations began to make fun of them, and so they did what we often do and we are guilty of today. They started fighting with each other. And in the midst of all this chaos and confusion, some people began to wonder, if God is good and God is God, then why doesn't God just come down and do something about this right now? So listen again to what the writer says. I wish you would tear the heavens open and come down. 
so the mountains would quake in your sight, like fire kindles brushwood, like fire makes water boil, to make your name known to your enemies. Let nations quake at your sight. You used to come down when we weren't even expecting it, and the mountains shook at your sight. The writer says, why don't you do something about this, God, right now? And then he shares the despair of his ontological alienation, and that's just a really fancy way of talking about the way that we feel when we sin. Ontological alienation simply means that our sin radically separates us from God and our fellow human beings and the world around us to the core of our very being. Now, it never destroys the image of God in which we were created, amen? And so the image of God can always be renewed and remade in God's image. So the writer felt utterly alienated from God. He says, were you, ang- you were very angry and we sinned for a long time. Can we even be saved? And have you ever been so wrapped up and caught up in your own sin that you didn't even think God could save you from it? And there was that habit that you just couldn't kick or there was that, that desire that just wouldn't subside. Well, he goes on to say, all of us are like an unclean thing. All our good deeds are like a menstrual rag. All of us droop like a leaf, and our iniquities carry us away like the wind. You know, sometimes we do good things, but we do those good things for the wrong reason, amen? And sometimes even when our intentions are good, we mess everything up. So we cannot fix ourselves. And since we can't fix ourselves, where do we turn from help? Well, then the writer says this in verse 8, Now, Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter, and all of us are the work of your hand. Don't be angry, Lord, to excess, and don't remember our iniquity forever. You see, what he's saying is our hope is not in our money or our stuff or even in our ability to fix ourselves. Our hope is not in politicians or in any earthly power. Our hope is only in the one who made us. God alone can heal our hearts and heal the hurts of the world. So now is simply the time to turn to God, our Father, and allow God to work on us and through us. In one of his novels, uh, Nikos uh, Kazantzakis tells about four men who go to the Pope to confess their sins. And one of them was a guy named Michaelis, and during his confession, he cries out, How can God let us live on earth? Why doesn't he just kill us to purify creation? And the Pope looks at Michaelis and says, because Michaelis, God is a potter. He works in mud. You see, that's the good news and the bad news. The bad news is we're mud. We're sinners. But the good news is that God works with mud. And God loves sinners. So that gives us hope for you and for me and for all of the broken sinners of the world. You and I can simply put ourselves in God's hands and allow God to to put us back on the pottery wheel and remake us and remold us in God's image. So when it feels like your world is spinning out of control, maybe it's just God putting you up on the pottery wheel, retouching, remolding you, remaking you in God's image. You see, Isaiah says we are the work of God's hand. Christ is the hope of the world, and when we follow him, people encounter Christ through us. And I don't think anybody has ever said this more beautifully than St. Teresa of Avila. When she wrote, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on the world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. That's humbling, isn't it? And it's also challenging, especially when the world crashes in on us. I'm keenly aware that the holidays are tough for so many families, especially when you're grieving the the death of of a loved one. I think maybe a couple of y'all know, 
that uh, my dad passed away on my birthday in 2017. And I cannot, I still don't have words for the feeling of standing outside dad's apartment waiting on the corner while my phone was blowing up with messages of happy birthday. Hope you're having a good time. That happened on Wednesday. On Friday, Michelle and I went to the football game at Little Rock Central. They were commemorating the 60th anniversary of integrating Little Rock Central High School. And it was important for us to, for a variety of reasons, to go and to remember, and also to support my brother Bryce, who was the band director. So we get to the game, and I'm walking up in the stands, and I see Mrs. Williams. And some of y'all might know Mrs. Williams. She's one of the assistant principals there at Little Rock uh, Central. And uh, she stands up, and she gives, oh, I'll just tell you, Mrs. Williams, she sent, I don't know how much food from Sims, and it was amazing and incredible. Amen? Fantastic person. So anyway, I'm walking up in the stands, and I pass Mrs. Williams. She, she stands up. She gives me a big old hug. And she says, Reverend Evans, how are you doing? I couldn't lie. And the words just kind of popped out of my mouth. It'll be better. It'll be better. You see, as followers of Christ, we are it'll be better people. It'll be better. There is a hope that lives within us, even in the worst of times. That's why Paul said, we boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. We are not only people of hope. We are people who bring God's hope to the world. And I can't think of a better example of that than my old friend Fifi Jones. Uh, you can see her in the wheelchair right down in the front row in, in the center of the, of the picture. Fifi lives down in, in Warren, and when I knew her and her late husband Calvin, uh, they weren't much according to the world standards. They were living on about $12,000 a year. But every month... Fifi prepared and delivered over 800 meals to feed the hungry in their community. At one time, about this time of year, Michelle and I took over some food to Fifi's for her community Thanksgiving meal that she, used to, that she served. And one thing about Fifi, if you, if you ever show up at her house, and I re strongly recommend you just drive down there sometime and do, and do that. Um, you ever show up at, at, at her house, she's going she to put you to work. Um, and you might find this hard to believe, but this uh, vegetarian preacher of yours carried about 10 gallons of chitlins from her house down to her kitchen. And um, so after we give Fifi the food, she starts fixing to-go bags for us. And I said, no, 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 Fifi, we brought, you, we brought you food. And she looked at me and she said, Reverend Evans, God is in the blessing business. If you bring us a blessing, you're going to get a blessing. You can't outgive God. Amen. Now, Fifi is 80 years old now, and like I say, she's wheelchair-bound, but her ministry is still going strong. A, a week ago yesterday, she and her helpers prepared this year's Thanksgiving meal. So you see, God doesn't always fix the world. Sometimes God fixes us, and God uses us to bless others. So if you're looking for hope this Christmas, Allow God to start fixing the world through you, and you will bring hope to God's world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the people of God said, amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for blessing us to be a blessing. And when the world seems dark and scary and full of violence and fear, we pray that you will give us hope that enables us to trust in the future that you have promised. God, we know the future is good because it is safely in your hands. And so we pray that you will work in our hearts, renew your image within us so that we might love as you love. 
and use our hands, use our feet, use our bodies to spread hope and peace and love and joy throughout your world. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and the people of God said, amen. If you'd like to join Asbury Church family, you're welcome to do that. Um, if, if you're here in the, in the WAC, you can come down after, after this song. If you're joining us online, I, I'd love to hear from you too. Uh, my email address is, uh, should be on the screen for you. Just get in contact. I'd love to talk with you about how you can become a part of our, our family as well. Would you please stand and let's sing this as a beautiful song, newer song called Living Hope. How great the chasm that lay between us, how high the
thank you so much for being here today. Um, looking forward, I hope you'll come back this evening at five o'clock for our first Advent dinner in like three years. Now on that note. Yes, sir. Leave the chairs out. And look, we got out a oh, few yeah. minutes early today. We did. We and so did. if you want to stick around and help bring out tables uh, for the dinner, please do that. I wanted to do that on behalf of Hannah Shelton, who asked me to make that announcement, who's hard at work for tonight. So uh, stick around, leave your chairs, and maybe put out a table or two. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> so Advent dinner at 5 tonight, followed by the hanging of the greens over in the sanctuary. It'll be a, a short service, but it's a very special. It talks about... The Hanging of the Greens is all about the way that we decorate and, and why the, these, the greenery is in, in, this, in this part of the building and, and in the sanctuary and things like the chrismons and the pyramids and things like that. So I want to encourage you to come back for that uh, is, and stick around for that tonight at 6 as well. And then uh, be sure and, and, and invite friends. You can find out all of the Advent events over, um, and Christmas events in the Five Things email. There's a list of those already. Uh, be inviting folks to come for Christmas Eve and, and all of that. And since we have a little bit of time, I will tell you that, um, so Christmas Day, you know, Christmas Day is Jesus' actual birthday, right? So we're going to have church on Christmas Day, and uh, it will be at, at 11 o'clock, so you can wake up, open all your toys, drink some hot chocolate and stuff. That service is going to be super casual, amen? If you want to wear your pajamas to church that Sunday, that's the Sunday to do it. And all those goodies that you have, like, sitting around that nobody's going to eat, just bring them up here, and we'll share them. Amen? <laughs> and we're going to have coffee and hot chocolate, and uh, the sermon is basically going to be a really fun children's message. And so we want, we want the kids to come, and, and they can bring, and we want to, anybody can do it, but uh, we really want our kids to bring their favorite gift that they get uh, from Santa. So whatever they get, uh, we want to encourage them to bring it, and, and we'll share that in, in the service. So anyway, that's Christmas Day. Uh, New Year's Day, we'll also have one service, but it's going to be really stodgy because Nick is going to do it. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's going to be good, too. It'll be at 11 o'clock over in the sanctuary, and that will be on, on New Year's Day because we want y'all to be able to stay up till midnight the night before and sleep in. So anyway, would you please receive this blessing? Go forth with Christ, with Christ above you to be your guide, with Christ below you to hold you up, with Christ beside you to be your friend, and with Christ within you to give you hope, love, joy, and peace. Go forth with Jesus Christ, your Lord, and the people of God said, amen.